Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Dubai Air Show, where our coverage is sponsored by FLIR Systems. And we're talking to Ken Malm, uh, who is uh, with Saab in the uh, air traffic uh, management side uh, of the business up in sunny uh, Syracuse, uh, New York. Ken, thanks very much for joining us. No problem. Um, so you guys are, uh, you know, uh, Dubai Airports has a lot of Saab uh, air traffic technology uh, that's associated with it. You guys also pride yourselves on a whole series of air traffic management systems in Sweden, uh, the concept of the unmanned control tower, centrally operated. Um, you guys are also working to digitize air traffic control systems, which is, I think, probably more applicable to larger places, you know, as opposed to a smaller Swedish town that gets one, you know, one, one airplane coming in a day or one airplane a week. Talk to us a little bit about this whole digitization initiative that you guys are, are putting forward and how it could change fundamentally air traffic management, especially as guys are getting much more congested. Sure, so uh, here at the air show, there's a lot of interest in airplanes and um, buying new aircraft because passenger growth is expanding quite a bit. And behind all of that is the technology that you need in order to actually run the airports. So that comes in a variety of forms, and Saab has a full portfolio in air traffic management, starting with sensors, where in places here like at Al Maktoum and in Dubai, we're putting in a wide area system. So we're combining sensors from both airports with some additional sensors off the airports to give a bigger surveillance uh, picture in the overall airspace. And then as you move up the chain into the control tower, you're looking at things like our integrated tower, uh, and then beyond that into what we call our digital tower. So digital towers are used in a number of instances, like you mentioned, they're used in a remote tower capability where you're trying to do control of a small place where you may not want to build a control tower or where you may not be able to provide control services because you can't staff it. So in those instances, you can put in a remote configuration like the, oh, it's not behind <laughs> me. I thought it was turned on mine. Yes, and the, dark, <laughs> the unique <laughs> sob Unique Saab dark screen technology. Oh, look, there it is. It's back up again. It's good. Look at that. It's it's uh, it's absolutely. It's like magic. It's like Saab. It's a lot like magic. So, so for example, this is Cork Airport in Ireland, and this is managed from a uh, control center in Dublin, and in um, that's one application. So smaller remote uh, remote places where you want to do that. Other applications are more like a gap filler. So for example, at Schiphol Airport in the Netherlands. They have a very large airport and there are places where they have a control tower that they had to staff at night and uh, they didn't want to continue staffing it all of the time. So they put in a gap filler solution where we're monitoring that part of the runway. They can turn that on at night, shift control back to the main tower. And then you also have contingency applications where um, you want to build something in case there's a problem in the main control tower or for example, if you need to move a tower or while you're doing work on a on a cab in a tower, and you need some temporary facilities. So there are a number of different applications where by going digital, you are expanding the capability and the use case. Um, there are also contract tower companies beyond that um, have hundreds of towers throughout the world that, aren't, that don't have any sort of air traffic control. So if we can build centers and then build uh, capabilities at those airports, um, you have you are expanding where you can do air traffic control throughout the world and bringing services to more and more people. Uh, talk to us a little bit about, I mean, basically what you are is in the information business in many cases, information management, information use business. Talk to us about how you're harnessing information and how you're presenting it differently, using it differently in order to be able to maximize the capabilities of airports, large and small, but largely on the larger side of things where digital tower is particularly important. How does that fit into the, the ecosystem and then change it? Sure, so uh, the way our traffic control is done now is largely through information from flight data, right? Uh, when you want to fly somewhere, you have to file a flight plan. That information follows that flight all over and it comes out in different forms. So if you're an air traffic controller in most places, that's a paper strip that's being used to uh, represent the aircraft and it's moved between different controllers who have responsibility for the aircraft in different places. That, when you take it up one level, becomes a flight strip, an electronic flight strip. So something like this where the, the paper strip is turned into a digital form and then moved more seamlessly uh, through that control process. One, one 
I guess, disadvantage of that is when you're a controller, you're really, your job is to look out the window and see the aircraft and monitor the aircraft. So the more time you have to have your head down looking at even a good computer system, is less time that you're looking out the window. So one of the things that we do with Digital Tower is as a plane comes in in a digital environment, we can tag it, track it, and then that same flight data that's represented either as a flight strip, an electronic flight strip, can be shown as a, as a label around the aircraft so that you're looking at the screen rather than down at a system and seeing the same information that you would, that you would need there. So the more heads up time we can, we can get controllers, the better, I think, in the long run. And, and it also avoids misunderstanding what an airplane is because it's not like, wait a minute, the third one and what the airplane number is takes that mystery out of it. You're just looking at it and you go, right, got it. Everybody has the same, same uh, common picture of what they're looking at. Exactly, because even if you have a ground display that's on a monitor in front of you, you're still looking at a strip at a ground display and out the window. If you combine all of that so that you're making one look and you see the plane and the flight data associated with it, then that's, that's something different. It's not being done anywhere right now, and there's certainly a lot of use case that needs to be figured out about how we're operationally going to do that, but it certainly opens up, it certainly opens up uh, the potential, and I think that type of innovation is where Saab is leading the industry and in figuring out how we're going to apply these new techniques. Um, by the way, I think it's also really cool that we're looking at three separate airports there uh, and, uh, um, and, and be able to monitor them. So how large is the addressable market you guys are pursuing? Like, you know, if you were going to put a, a market size on this, is it a $5 billion market, a couple of hundred million dollar market, a couple of billion dollar, tens of billions of dollars? What's the size of the market and, and how much of that are you going to be garnering? I'm not sure You're how much. Personally, personally, can how take. How much is going in my bank account? <laughs> not much. Uh, I'm not sure how much I can actually say about what we see as the exact market, um, but I think that it's, it's a It's because you're looking at it differently, isn't it? Partly. Uh, partly it's proprietary. It's okay. kind of how we're assessing the market, and um, partly I think we don't know. So we're still fairly early in the maturity curve for this technology. Um, I think there is, when you look at the number of airports being built in China, in India, uh, there's hundreds. So um, there's even, there, there are a lot in the United States, where I'm from, um, there's a whole contract tower program which expands much beyond what the FAA controls. Um, and there's probably a large application there as well. So I think you're, you know, you're looking at a fairly large um, market and it's one that Saab clearly is investing in at a high level, so uh, it's not a small market. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, thanks very much, best of luck. Very, very interesting technology, and uh, one of these days look forward to going and, and uh, to one of those airports in Sweden and actually checking out what it's like to go to a completely unmanned airport <laughs> and, and land at it. Thank you so much. All right, thank you.